Building Communities Fund project, a group of support organisations in Calderdale wanted to develop collaborative and community-led approaches to address health inequalities. In this video, we'll tell you a bit more about how we listen to communities, the projects we funded and what we learnt by changing the way we commission. The aim of the Building Community Connections programme was to reduce the impact of COVID-19 on health inequalities in five wards with high levels of deprivation in Central and North Halifax. We did this through three specific approaches. The first was building on peer-to-peer -peer support and community-led responses by placing co-design at the centre of our programme. The second was by funding local grassroots organisations to be the glue between marginalised communities and local health and wellbeing services. The third was an ambitious community reporters programme that trained residents and workers to initiate conversations with the question, what makes a good life for me? And so identify the most important local issues. Racism, access to the environment, language, digital exclusion, and isolation were just some of those key local issues that emerged. To find out more about how COVID-19 had impacted on people living in Central and North Halifax and what health interventions may be needed, we trained local people as community reporters who went out and spoke to the folk that they knew and the people who lived in their area about how COVID-19 had affected them. In these stories, people talked about issues such as systemic racism, living with a lack of human contact, and the obstacles they were facing to care, treatment and general well-being support. We made a conscious effort to reach groups of people who were usually excluded from having their voices heard, and we wanted to make sure that the health interventions really focused on what they were saying. To do this, we worked with the community reporters, the storytellers and project partners to reflect on what we'd heard in the stories and identify key recommendations for the health interventions we were seeking to commission. The recommendations and learnings from this included improving access and inclusion to outdoor spaces, addressing digital exclusion and involving people with lived experience of issues in the services that support them whether this be in the governance or delivery of the service or in the design of it. We believe that increasing voice, visibility and leadership of people who are otherwise excluded or marginalised from services will help get services that are more appropriate for the people that they serve. I wake up every morning not knowing what to do. The first two weeks of quarantine, I would just hold on to my wall in my room. And I would say, God, you've got to help me. Jesus, take the wheel. So I was just taking one day at a time. As time went on, I thought, it's not going to come out. It's not, it's not going to end as quick as I thought it would. And I thought, oh, I've got this. But I hadn't. So I thought, oh, sorry, I'll have a drink. Nobody will know. And then before I knew it, I was back to the beginning with my alcoholism. Because I would have loved to uh, be able to have a chance to for the, for the GP to evaluate what I'm going through and probably prescribe what I can actually use rather than say, oh, go on, go on, get, go on, buy a um, painkiller and take. Because the, the painkiller actually did harm to my, to my health. So we took those key local issues and developed a specification for organisations with a local track record in Central and North Halifax. Community reporters were involved in all stages and we allocated funds to three organisations. Some of the lessons we learned were that capacity is needed locally to lead collaborative and partnership bids. Pre-bid workshops emphasising where the issues came from would have strengthened that connection to the community reporters and written applications have significant limitations when encouraging smaller groups to apply. Videos may have worked better. Three local community groups were awarded a total of £37,500 through the commissioning process. Let's hear what difference that funding made. Hi, I am Emily from St Augustine Centre in Halifax. We have used this funding to develop and deliver health-related sessions for our community of asylum seekers and refugees. 
We've also been able to set up a group of researchers from the community to gather stories around people's access to health services. What we did is that we did series of program every every month. Yeah. We run it from that last month up to end of this January. So we were doing twice in a month. So part of the program we did, we did mental health, we did art and crafting, we did cooking. Yeah. yeah so yeah, those are part of our project. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And we did also woman um ah, it's a woman resource woman's rights telling up educating people about their woman rights when to speak up not to be quiet because I've seen that in African community mm -hmm. many people are just quiet many people are, but this project really opened our eyes and people were able to come out the last one we did oh, oh my gosh there was a lady there she was crying she was in tears so I just want to say thank you to the funding because oh. if we didn't do this project, I'm being serious. People like that won't be able to voice her. She was, I was, she was prop crying in front of everybody because of what she was going through. She couldn't pour it out to somewhere else, but because she sees that she's in part of our community, so she was able to just pour out that pain, out that body, and I just have to pick it up from there and able to sort out some things for her. I don't think people could visualise it. But when you said community garden, I think people thought of allotment and they thought of that, you know, ramshackle shed falling down. I'm not saying I'm generalising here. You know, there's that ramshackle shed, you know, no space to do whatever it, it is, just planting. And I think, I don't think they could visualise exactly what we had in mind, you know, that there would be that recreational space within it, doing the other stuff around it with the veg and the flowers and stuff. And Frida, the old lady that lives directly next to the paddock, actually said, she agreed, she told us that she'd put an objection into the council and said, no, I don't want it. And now she's our biggest supporter. She feeds seeds through the fence. She says, I love it when you're in there because I feel safe. And she loves to look through the fence and see all the flowers. So we always make sure that at her end, she can see. Yeah, and we've made sure that we've planted in there what she can see. So what did we learn? It was really important to us that we tried this new way of commissioning, but it wasn't always perfect or plain sailing. Here's what we'd recommend to anyone thinking of trying something similar. Resourcing. Prepare for the process to be more resource intensive than you might be used to. You'll need to allow more time, invest more support and involve more people in the process than a traditional grant giving process. Flexibility was key for us throughout, so give yourself the freedom to try new things and tweak what's not working. Use local knowledge. Involve as many people as you can with strong knowledge of the local area. Try and make the application process open and creative. Avoid written forms where possible. Instead, try creative ways for groups to apply, like using video, illustrated submissions or in-person pitches. Allow organisations to rework projects after the application stage if things aren't quite right. A buddy system can help guide people through the process. And finally, involve people. Build your networks and focus on relationships at every stage. Listen to those community voices and bring them to the fore wherever you can. Don't let them get buried in the paperwork. Involve community reporters throughout the process. Find grassroots groups who is already doing the work in your area and encourage them to apply. Try and link all stages of the process. For example, close the loop by having the organisations that have been funded report back to the community. Mm -hmm.